Okay. Uh, All right. Back. Yeah, I had a gum in my mouth. I was like, oh, no, that's not good. Nice. All right. It is 1.30. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. All right. Let's do it. Do you? Oh, do you want to share your screen? I'm sure. I would love to. Let me just get to the right. Oh, no. Yes, we are here together. There we go. Share the screen. And hello, everyone. Thank minute, you for don't... joining us. Oh, I didn't start it yet. Okay, ready? Yes. Hi. <laughs> All right. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to our digital signatures class with zip forms using either DocuSign or Digital Inc. I am your co host, Anthony. I work here at Orange County Realtors. I've uh, been here now for almost 20 years. I am part of the outreach team to uh, be able to give training on all your tools and products. We are graced by our trainer today by the name of Leo Loera. Loera, uh, can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm about five foot eight. I need to lose a few pounds here and there. Oh, you want to learn about what I actually do here at the board? Well, I've been with the, let me just go over that with you right now. So I've been a staff member with the board since 2007. So about 15 years I've been with the association. And um, geez, a lot of things have changed since then. I start off in membership and progress from membership over to becoming a super specialist and then a trainer. And I've taught a number of different topics and uh We've done a lot. We've done in the past in-person training, but right now it's only uh, webinars that we're doing, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll be doing some hybrid classes in the near and, future. And what basically hybrid is is basically doing virtual and uh, in-person training at the same time. So hopefully, eventually, as the year goes through, we'll be able to do that for you guys. Now, um, just a quick update: we are recording today's webinar. Um, but we also encourage lots of questions. So if you do have a question that's something that Leo does go over, please write it in the chat box or write in the Q&A section. I'll read it off to Leo, to Leo and he can read it back to, or, and then he can answer it. So um, we definitely encourage questions. Uh, today, what we're going to make sure that we go over is how to digitally sign documents using both DocuSign and Digital Inc from start to finish. Uh, we're gonna answer those popular questions. Well, what's the difference between the two? When I say I wanna send out documents for DocuSign or send things out for digital signatures or e-signatures, we're gonna help you understand those differences just a little bit. So with that said, Leo, take it away. I'm gonna mute myself, take myself off camera and you can have at it, my friend. All right, great. So last class, we talked about some of the basics of how to use zip forms. This one, we're specifically just going over digital signatures. We're gonna show you first how to use um, DocuSign and then the next version will be how to use um, Digital Ink 2.0, I apologize. So we'll go to the next slide. There we go. So, and we'll also discuss the similarities and differences and then we'll have questions and answers. So we may not be able to use the whole hour and a half. We may have some leftover time. So. Um, and we'll maybe maybe touch a couple things extra at the very end if we have time. So first things first, uh, Digital Ink 2.0. Now that's built into Zip Forms. That comes from Zip Logics, Lone Wolf. Uh, it's free. There's free unlimited signatures. Um, the only thing that some people may dislike about it that there's limited number of signature styles, and then uses PDF formats only. Whereas a DocuSign. You can either do the five signatures, five free signatures a month, like I'm doing to be able to teach this class per month, or you can do the equivalent of digital ink and spend $240 a year. You have to go through DocuSign.com to set that up. There actually is a link through NAR to be able to take advantage of it at a discount. Um, so you may want to go through that route. Uh, they have more signature styles, and then they have more formats that they, you can do digital signing on, so like Microsoft Word and other documents. 
So those are the, one of the big differences. Um, so this is just some Q&A stuff. The law regarding security deposit handling was changed um, to allow for electronic signatures. Uh, the which CAR standard forms, and this is straight from CAR some time ago, uh, may, may now be signed with electronic signature as a result of that change. And you can go to that list right there. There are still some forms that cannot be electronically signed. So you'll have to take a look at that. And um, But for the great majority of the forms, you can electronically sign them. And Leo, one common question we always get asked, is one better than the other? Well, I don't like spending money because I'm a cheapskate. I know well, you that's not, that's not the, well, I mean, that's kind of, the, you know, both of them, the basic answer to that question is what? No, they're both no. very user friendly, right? They're both very easy to use. Just one costs you money. The other one doesn't. I know a lot of people would ask, well, geez, why would I ever pay for it when we have a free service? And that's just because of what? Personal Convenience. What, what Convenience. your personal preferences are. Um, and we'll go over that. We'll show you the differences and you'll say like, oh, yes. Oh, why? You'll be able to comparing the two on your own and I'll go over that with you as well. And you can make a determination of which one will best suit your needs. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, this is a continuation of those electronic signatures. By the way, this webinar is being recorded. So that way you can be able to play this back at a later time and practice on your own. I strongly encourage you to practice, practice, practice to uh, get an idea of what you will see on a regular basis when you do electronic signatures and on as well as what your client will see on the other hand when they do electronic signatures. So I do want you to practice sending contracts back and forth to yourself so that way you can be able to, you won't be surprised at the very end. So um, getting started, let's go ahead and jump into CAR's website, car.org. Um, so I've already signed in. Uh, I've already signed in. If you want to sign in, you can. But uh, you know, honestly, if you want to just follow along, that's fine too. And just take notes. Um, just be able to show you how to be able to do, to use this um, electronic signature. So the first thing is, I'm going to go to my profile. And I want to go to profile and settings. Now, why are you doing that, Leo? because I just like hitting buttons and it's really exciting hitting buttons. But more importantly, I'm going to change my settings for electronic signature. So are you saying that why, so Oops. you can add in uh, other signature platforms to zip forms? Uh, you can use either DocuSign or Digital Ink. Those are your two choices. So with an, after you hit profile in me, within me and you hit profile and settings, you're going to go into settings and then you can choose digital ink 2.0. That's the default. Or you can go to here to DocuSign. Now, if you don't have a DocuSign account and you want one, you can be able to sign up here. Yours, it's going to show you something different where it's going to have to, where you can link a DocuSign account if you've already set one in the past, set one up in the past, or you can get a DocuSign subscription. Um, you can do that at a later time. But let me just show you what it looks like using DocuSign, and then you can determine whether or not you want to use DocuSign. So we're going to start with that. So by default, what I have chosen is my DocuSign account for all future transactions until I get back over here and change it. But I can change it later if I wanted to. So clicking Save. And then I'm going to go into Transactions. So. First things first, we're going to go into this one, George Castle. Now, this was a transaction we created last class, and I'm going to jump all the way to the documents. Uh, actually, double checking one thing. Yep, I do have a client. I want to make sure I have a client. Um, so I have a client. This is me, the selling agent, um, the buying agent. Now, is that then, important to, to have at least somebody's name on a contract so you can uh, practice it? Yeah because in order for you to send out documents, you have to have at least a minimum of the person's name and the email address. That's it. Um, we encourage you to fill out the other information. Strongly encourage you to fill out the information because you're going to be doing contracts with your client. You do want to fill out the other information. Um, if it's a, for example, let's say it's a trust, the trust information would be up here in this top section, whereas the person who's going to sign it 
on behalf of the trust would fill it out right there. Um, so, but in this practice session, it's just going to be an individual George Castle. So going to hit cancel because nothing's changed. Okay. So we have one person going to sign the contract and then there's me as well. So I am going to go into documents. And then I'm going to choose the residential purchase agreement contract. Just practice that. I could have clicked this box and clicked e-sign. I, I honestly, I accidentally clicked it just by habit. I'm going to click e-sign over here on the top left. So when I click e-sign, now I'm automatically in the process of starting the signature process. Now I'm going to change the name of this. I'm going to call this DocuSign. DocuSign with glass. Okay, so that's the name of the packet. Signing services there. If I wanted to change it at the last minute to Digital Ink 2.0, I can do that, but I'm going to leave it as is. If I wanted to add additional forms, I can. So let's say I wanted to add, um, say this one, the listing agreement form B, which in our last class, we said it was a fictitious document uh, that our broker has told us to use in this particular transaction. Your situation is going to be different. Of course, you're gonna have a lot more uh, contracts and disclosures that are gonna be here. But I'm just showing you how to use software. So once again, I'm selecting the forms. So here they are, one and two. Now the next step will be going clicking next. I'm gonna select the parties. Um, I'm gonna start off with just one person. It's just gonna be George Castle because I just want you to see what it looks like. After clicking it, you're going to see in the background that this is kind of darkened in here. So sign in. And then, believe it or not, there is George Castle right behind here. I'm going to close that. See, George Castle. He's the only one that's going to sign this process. If I want to add more signers, I can be able to do that. But we're going to work on George. So I click next. <coughs> Excuse me. This is fun, exciting stuff. So it's loading. Now on your end, it may take a little bit longer to load depending on your internet speed. Um, I noticed that at my home, it's fast because I'm paying for it. Here, eh, not so much. It's a little slower. But so it depends on your internet speed. So first things first, DocuSign, the, the actual document is right there in the middle. So on the right hand side of me, the right hand side of the image will be all the pages. So if I scroll around, as I scroll up and down, you'll see all the different pages. Yes, all 25 of them. If I go to the left side, the left side will show you that uh, fields that I can be able to use, like I can drag a signature field, I can drag, drag initials, I can drag date sign, etc. So you see all the different choices there. Now I am going to now, because I'm, I'm an agent in this scenario, I'm going to do my fiduciary duty to make sure that all the fields have been, auto, have been populated correctly. If there's any mistakes, I want to make sure that I correct it. So if I get, if I get like irritated by my clients, the buyer, I can use this checkbox and drag it right there. So I, in other words, I'm clicking it, holding it down, and then drag it across and then leave it right there. So now I have drag and drop. Now I can do uh, I can do it a read only if I wanted to. So that way it's there and the client doesn't have to do anything or I can have the client actually click it. But in this case, it's a buyer. So read only. And there's a lot of other choices that you can go through and spend time on it formatting. You really want to change all the fonts if you wanted to. You can if you wanted to, but I'll just leave it as is. Now, the, sig the person's name is there. The signature will appear there, and the date sign will appear there on this page. And we have a lot more to go through. So if I wanted to spend the next hour and 30 minutes, actually hour and 16 minutes, going through every single page, you know, I could do that, but we're not. <laughs> so to speed things up, 
We're going to uh, Leo. Go, go ahead. Do all the documents? Do I have to place the signature areas on all the documents myself, or the, does the system already have those areas pre-placed for me? The great. That's a great question. The great majority of the time, over ninety-five percent of the time, within DocuSign and Digital Ink, these will already auto-populate it by CAR. So you won't have to worry about that. But there are times when you have to double check, like when you do a real transaction out to a client, just take the time and go over the contract and make sure all those items that should have been check marked or signatures should have been there, you populate, you drag and drop it right there because you're taking care of your client. So once again, it's the great majority of the time, over 95% of the time, it will be auto-populated for signatures and initials or whatever and action that's requested by the client. Um, so, but to speed things up a little bit, I'm just gonna go right through it and go to the last page. Oh, this is the last page of the, of the, last page of this particular form. So we've gone through all that and I have to go to the next page, which is the listing agreement. So it's down here. So as you see, the first section here is document one. So if we go to document two, this is one thing I really like about DocuSign. You can switch between document one and go to document two. And you see that it's just, document two is just one page, listing agreement form that fictitious document that we uploaded. Now, as you see, there's nothing here. There's nothing uploaded. There's nothing at all. So we have to do some dragging and dropping. So as you see, I have nothing there at all, nothing highlighted. So we have to do all the work. So date sign, I'll put it there. If I wanted to um, put in a text box there, I could. Yeah, I'll put a text box in there. And then let's see, do read only, and we'll say it's in Fountain Valley. Yeah, Fountain Valley. Okay. And we scroll down further. You get the idea. You can do some dragging and dropping and see what needs to be done. Uh, once again, date signed drag, drop, name, drag, click, and then drag, drop. And let's say seller's signature, drag, drop. Everybody say it with me, drag, drop. And if you wanna just practice, I, I don't know, a checkbox, we'll put a checkbox here for fun, drag and drop. Okay. so. We've done this for the entire document. So as you were to scroll up and down, so you'll see that all the things that we put on there, it's perfect. Yes, I put a check mark in a spot that doesn't require a check mark, but we're just practicing with the software. And then I click send. Then click send down here or I click send up there. I can also preview it if I want to. So let's preview it. And it's funny, you have different formats, a tablet, you have the phone, a cell phone, but we're gonna use a desktop version. So we're doing that. So we kind of just see start and then it goes directly to the next one. Start now, your client would click there to sign and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna skip all the way down to the bottom because I wanna see what the last one looks like. There you go. So the last one looks like this. It's going to be, of course, the date will be there that we put on there. Fountain Valley, I could have made that better, uh, my bad. But it's right there. And then let's see, the check mark was somewhere in this mess. Oh, there it is right there, that's a check mark. And then there's the person's name and the date. Oh, that looks horrible. <laughs> and the signature will be right there. So, yes. Um, and then I can close that up. Um, I wonder if I can fix that real quick. No, you know what? Let's see. That's page one. That's that form. Okay. 
Oh, where'd it go? Where did my E sign go? I think you exit exited out of it, Leo. No. <laughs> Everybody stop laughing at me. <laughs> Where's my E signs? Where are my E signs? Okay. I'll go to transactions. Did I just exit it out of it and make myself cry a little bit? I think I did. <sighs> See this, I do this for all of you. <laughs> I want all of you to know what not to do. Okay, there's the e sign section. Um, with class, there it is. Okay. And not there. View details, history. Yeah, that's the one. I have never retrieved it every time. I've, I've never exited out of it too early. This is the first for me. We're all witnessing human history right here. Okay. So before I jinx myself any further, there's actions here. We can take a look at edit the message, edit recipients, documents, et cetera if you want to play with that, but I'm not going to jinx myself. I'm going to click send. So I'm going to send it out to my client for signatures. Thank you for using DocuSign. Thank you. So that is what we will see as the agent on our end. Now we have to wait for the client. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to make sure that before you send this out, this is going to be true with Digital Link 2.0, that your client has access to an email address, has access to a computer or a tablet or, yeah, a tablet. I, you don't want to use a phone because it's kind of hard to read all the information on a cell phone. And uh, they're comfortable using digital signatures. If it's, if it's yes on all of those, then this is the right process to use to take care of a client. Also, you want to double check with the other parties involved to make sure that they're okay with digital signatures. There might be some parties out there that may not want you to use digital signatures, they want you to use wet signatures, this signature from the individual with pen and paper. So but we're assuming that all parties involved are A-OK -okay with this. So I'm going to go back to the list, leave it alone. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to hunt down that email so that way you can see what it looks like on the client side. So I'll go to inbox. And there it is, George Castle at Signal Hill. I'm going to open that up. So now I, George Castle, I'm the client. I'm going to review the documents. And there's a lot of information here. This information, we weren't able to change it. It was just, it's a, it's a standard format that DocuSign sends out. And your client would read all this information. And do encourage you to go ahead and read this as well. We're going to review the document. Now your client wants to, the client has to agree to the terms and conditions of electronic record and signature disclosure. I would encourage you to go ahead and print this out, put it on the side. So that way, if your client has a question about it, you can read it and go over it with them. So uh, do take your time on that. Because sometimes some clients will just like click, click, click. And other ones you're like, well, what does paragraph two mean? Third sentence mean? Okay, you'll go over Video. that with them. Yes. We have a we have a question here from Vicky Rosenstein. She goes, if I have two clients in a trust, but they share one email address, do I send the email twice? Also, did you show us about the order of signatures? So basically, she's got two people in a trust. Um, Vicky, I'm going to ask real quick. Um, is there one particular trustee that's in charge of the trust? Or is it required that both trustees actually sign the form? One as the trust and one of the other signers sign as a trustee of the trust. Apparently both are signing and they share one email address. So, um, Leo, can you show like how both signers would 
you would pick both signers with one email address. So essentially, Vicki, yes, both signers are going to sign individually. It's just that with the one email address, uh, whoever the first person is in that order will get the email request to sign first. Then once that person is done, as Leo is going through right about now, then the email request will then be sent to the same email address for the second signer. So say if it was um, um, John Smith and Jane Smith sharing one email address. If John was the first one, John would get it first. He would sign as John. Then the email request is sent again for Jane to sign as Jane. Does that help, Vicki? And what I'll do is I'll first go through this one transaction under George showing everyone how to do it with just one signer. And I'll go it back in using DocuSign showing two signees. And of course, Leo, given time today, we'll also demonstrate how you can assign uh, a, either a trustee or an officer to a trust or an LLC through the parties uh, section. So um, after he goes through all this, we'll repeat the scenario about that. And then we can show you where they, you know, you can get that on there. Because as we all know, the name of the trust has to be on the, on the form or the name of the LLC, but you've got an, an officer or a trustee signing for that trust. We're going to show you how to do the signing representative to sign for that trust. Okay. All right, let's get started with just finalizing this one transaction. So this is George by himself. George agrees to it. George clicks continue. There are other actions that George can take a look at it, print, sign, assign to someone else. Um, oops. Uh, decline to sign. But uh, in this case, he's going to continue. So the first step would be uh, reminding the client that you're going to have to go over this contract with them and they should be scrolling it down line by line so that we explain to them all the information here. You don't want your client to just go, oh, look at this button that says click, start. Oh, look, I skipped all that. Didn't read any of that. No, no, you still have to go over that information with them. That's your, your, that's your fiduciary duty to take care of your client. So first things first, we're going to click the first spot as required. Sign here. The client, George Castle. Here's his name. Here's his initials. Here's the font style, and he can change it to whatever font style he wants. There's these different font styles you can use to choose from. Plenty to choose from. I'm gonna change it to this one, or I can draw one. So for example, the sick draw your signature to be George. And I'm, of course I'm using a mouse, so it's gonna look like really bad. Yeah, it looks horrible. Oh my gosh. Oh yes, this is just wrong. No, I don't like this one. So if he wanted to use this one, he can. Or if he wants to upload his signature, which he already has formatted, he can be able to do so. But I'm going to go with my choice here because it looks clean and nice and adopt and sign. So George, it's really up to George if he wants to draw it, draw one all right on the screen, or if he wants to upload it. And then there's some information here, adopt and sign. So he's already touched the first one. We're going to the second one now. So in order for him to go to the second one, he's not gonna click this. He's just gonna click required sign here, but it's important once again, this is not a video game. This is, a, this is in your world, there'd be a real transaction. Mine's just practicing. So we don't want the client just to go click, 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 like a video game. This isn't Space Invaders. No, it's, uh, it's, a, it's gonna be a transaction that's gonna affect their life. So. It's important that you go over this with them, but I'm just showing you the quick version of it because I'm just showing you how to use the software. Almost done. See, we're over here. Page 17 of 25, and we're almost there. Almost there. Oh, by the way, this optional. So the optional looks very similar to the required. Color looks very familiar. I mean, very similar, same color and everything except really tiny letters underneath it, it says optional. So the client can choose to not agree to it. So I'm going to skip that one just to show you that the client doesn't have to sign 
this particular spot where it talks about arbitration. So I'm going to skip that one, go to the next one. Required signature, required initial, initials, yes, yes. So we are back on our uh, agreement. So it shows here that this information is there, the date, the time. And once it's finalized, this will be updated as well. So right now it shows it's 2 o'clock on my screen. So it'll be 1,400 hours. And it's Fountain Valley. And I go down. Where'd it go? Where's that little initial? Oh, there it is, right there. Optional. And then click Next. And Required Signature. So I've according to this, I'm finished. So I can go ahead and click finish. Now, the last thing that DocuSign wants to do is like, oh, by the way, you can sign up for a free account through DocuSign. Um, the client can do so. They're not required to do so. Um, because when we, when we finish this whole transaction, they'll be able to get a, they're going to get a link to download their document. And you'll have also the documents available on your end through zip forms for up to seven years. It's considered uh, it's saved through your, um, tra in your transactions that are zip vault. So I'm gonna click no thanks. George Castle has declined. So it says, yeah, you finished signing. Yay. I know excited. I'm too excited about this. So once that's done, I can go back and now take a look and say, all right, I've signed it. Now what? Oh, look it, I got the finalized copy because I was the only party that signed it. So if I open up that email, I can see, let me scroll down a little bit. Your, your document has been completed. Yeah, I can view the completed documents by click, clicking that. And um, all parties have completed. That's it. So that would be, and of course, you're going to get a copy of it in your end as well. So if the client clicks it, they'll be able to go to through DocuSign and they can be able to uh, print it if they want to, print, and they can download it if they want to. So. This is the actions that they can be able to do. And other information, view the certificate, et cetera. So that's how you do DocuSign. Now we're going to try DocuSign with two parties. And Leo, besides the email, where else does an agent receive the documents, seeing how you merged it with zip forms? Where else would the uh, agent see it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be right over there in transactions. So I'm going to the transaction within zip forms, going to documents. And I see here, this one right here, DocuSign with class 14. If I open that up, there it is. Residential purchase agreement, listing agreement, and the summary. So if I open this up, it shows you the PDF version from DocuSign signed by all parties. In this case, it was just George. Okay, I'll just go to a page and have you take a look at that. There it is, really tiny, but that's a signature and the date and the time. And the time uh, will change up until the point that the whole process has been finalized. And we finalize it at two o'clock, 1400 hours. So that's the reason why it, it didn't, it wasn't at a different time. It'll be consistent all the way through. So that's it for that one. So you can find it here. Also one important thing. So those are the contracts that were signed, but this is the summary. The summary is very important not to throw away. You do not want to delete this because this is your proof that your client signed this. So this is the information that in case there's ever disputes saying, if George saying, well, I never signed the contracts. Um, yes, you did, George, because under the summary, yes, you did. I have the information showing proof that you did sign it. So, so there's the information there. So in case you ever have a dispute, there it is. So we had a question about two parties. Okay, I'm gonna add a party. It's my party and I'm crying if I want to. I'm sorry, I was a horrible singer. We're gonna use Charlene Client. Charlene Client and Name it a tr actually name it a trust name, so make buyer to the name of the trust. Oh, okay, not a problem. I can do that. 
Charlene Client Trust. How's that? Sounds good. So for Vicky's question, when you have a trust and you have the trust name, now you can go to parties, which is found under the transaction and go to where, Leo? Write that again. And then you go to parties, you bring up the trust, which in this case is buyer two. And then yes. where did you go from here? Um, after I went through here, I'm just going to type that up real quick. Um, I hit, I, after going to parties, I click buyer two. And then I added, I went to my address book rather than typing all the information in. So, but in your scenario, it's going to be you're typing in all the information here. And then if it's a trust or LLC, you're going to fill out the trust and LLC information on the top. But the bottom half where it says signing representative, the one person signing on behalf of the trust will be right down here. So in this case, it would be Charlene Client Trustee. So first, middle, last name, Charlene Client Trustee with her email. Sure. Charlene Connie Client. That's her middle name. So she's signing on behalf of the trust. Correct. Or will be. Yeah, we could change it to um, family of, or family, client family. Yeah, how's that look? Looks good. So now we see client family, so it stands out easier. It's going to be the individual the rep person representing the trustee and then the selling agent or the buying agent, the agent. So if we were to send the documents out for electronic signature again, we can be able to do so. We can do an e-sign from here and do a new session. We'll do it once again for residential purchase agreement. Um, I'll show the listing agreement so we can show both how to do it. And then it's going to be DocuSign with Trust. And once again, two documents going out. There's George and Charlene. And I'm going to click Close. Now, as you see here, they both have the same email address. If I wanted to, I can go and drag it and drop it and make it I can change the order if I wanted to. Doesn't matter. In your world, it would matter because you're going to be the one to contact the first person that's available. So if Charlene's not available, you can contact George first or vice versa. If Charlene's available, you can talk to Charlene and have it go through the entire process first, and then you'll go through George later. So it, it doesn't matter. If you wanted to do it the same, that concerns me. That concerns me because they both have the same email address and it's very easy for Charlene to get the invitation for George because the invitation for the signatures will be both sent out at the same time because they're both in the same order. So if to prevent that from happening, I'm gonna have George be number two. So Charlene will get the signature session first. That way I can do a one-on-one -on -one with her and talk to her through the entire process. And once she's finished, it's automatically going to go to George. And then George will have to go through the signing process with me over the phone to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, one thing also I forgot to mention is that these little symbols here, uh, you can delete the individual if you wanted to, or you can um, correct the email address if you wanted to. So if you wanted to, you can click this. And if Charlene was misspelled in any way, or it was actually Connie, Connie spelled that way, then okay. yeah, you can be able to do that. Now you'll also notice here that it says uh, Charlene uh, Connie client, who's the trustee of the family, uh, the client family trust. So it doesn't, so when the document gets signed, the printed name on the document is going to say the uh, client family trust the signer will be Charlene Connie client trustee. 
Does that make sense for everybody? Vicki, did that help answer your question from earlier? And I might as well show it what it looks like too. Sure. So I'll let you uh, continue on your process. It's like one of those things, you just got to show it all the way through. So we wait for the, the powerful internet to load everything. And this is kind of great because now you get to see how to choose between the different signers. There we go. So in the first session, here we have documents. So let me just uh, collapse it down a little bit. So we have listing agreement, residential purchase agreement. So if we scroll down a little bit, we see two different colors. So George Castle will be the blue and Charlene is going to be in the orange, orange color one. And here is the order of the individuals on the left side. So on the left side, it's gonna be Charlene's gonna get first dibs. And after she's done, George will be able to do it. So that's how you're gonna be able to tell between the two. So if it was George, see how the colors have changed? And your focus now will be on George. If I go back to Charlene, now the focus is back on Charlene. And if you need to do any dragging and dropping, like for example here, um, you could, but I, I'm going to delete it. <laughs> and Vicky, would, Vicky needs you to repeat that again. Okay. So on the left side, on the top left, it's going to show you the, the choices of individuals, Charlene and George. Now, in the order that we chose, Charlene was the first available person to sign the document. So that's the reason why she's the top line here. And then George is the second person because we'll go over with George after we'll go over with Charlene because our concern is not to send the invitation to both pe people at the same time because they have the same email address. Plus, it's easier for me as an agent to go over the information one by one to make sure I answer that person's questions. Sometimes that person's questions may be muted by the other person. We don't want that to happen. So it's very important that we cover that. Um, so, and then of course, going back to the document, going to the very last one, there's nothing here. So what I'm going to do is date signed, just quickly show it and date sign. I don't know why I put the date up there. And let's do signature, signature and seller's name or person's name, I should say. There you go. Now we have to do the same thing with, we're not done yet. We have to do the same thing with George. So we're gonna do George's signature there and George's name. I'll put George's name right there too. I'm practicing or showing how to use the software. I know that address would not be the right spot for a full name of George, but we're just practicing to show you how it looks like. And then once I send it out, then it goes from there to going to the next spot. There we go. Thank you for choosing. Thank you for using um, DocuSign. So we see that now it's DocuSign with trust. We're going to wait a moment. Now I'm going to go to my email and wait for the documents to be sent over to me. Refresh it. There it is. So the first person that gets this is, who knows? It is Cheryl, Charlene. So Charlene gets first dibs. So review the documents. Charlene gets first dibs. So once again, I'm the agent going over these documents with her. I've explained everything to her. Um, she agrees to this. I'll quickly go through this um, because you have a, you get an idea of what's going on. Initials are great. She likes that font. She's a no-nonsense kind of person. Just like, let's get through this. I got things to do, people to see, et cetera. I mean, all right, no problem. Of course, once again, you're not gonna do this with your, your client. You can do this practicing, but don't do this please with your client because your client wants to know what's, what am I signing? What am I initialing? What's, what am I missing, et cetera. Yeah, there we go, that's fine. Oops, I missed one, I missed one. 
There we go. Signature. And almost. And George's signature would be, of course, up there. That's it. And we go finish. So that session is done with Charlene. So once it's done with Charlene, now it's going over to our dear friend, George. And Charlene's also being promoted the DocuSign account. So we click no thanks. We're good. Close that up. Get rid of that. And then all of a sudden, boom, pops up an email. Who's it for? It's for George. George gets to sign it. So George gets, does the same exact thing. I know a lot of you are falling asleep now. I'm, I'm pushing through this as quickly as I can. I will go through it as fast as I possibly can. Choosing a font. Font looks delicious. I like it. And then I uh, continue on, continue on. So how about them doctors? Okay, sorry, I'm supposed to be focused on this. It's pretty boring, I know, it's almost done. We are almost done. See on the side over here, shows that we're almost done. That's really what our marker, that's really the, our guide to tell us how far is it. Your client may say, oh, how much longer? Okay, well, it's on the side. Okay, signatures are there, finish. And we are done. No, George doesn't want that. Thank you, but no thank you. Okay, so I delete that email. In just a moment, both parties are going to receive the email separately. So that way they have a finalized document for their records. So for example, um, it's going to be all parties have signed it. Here it is, the first one. They can view the documents and they will see that all parties have signed it. See, signature is right there. George and Charlene. You can go through it on your own and see what it looks like. It's really not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's important for your clients to, that you understand this process. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, so that's the key server. And then here's the final one. Signatures there, date and time. We finished it at 2.15 p.m. by Charlene and, and uh, George. Okay. So that is all done. So we have finished it using the DocuSign account. Um, now let's try digital ink. Now, I, I think that some of you feel like, ah, it's, it's like watching grass grow. No, it's a little bit more exciting than that. So I'm going to go back to me. Now, Leah, before you proceed on, Vicki asks uh, another question. Do you sure. suggest that agents info and SIGs go out before or uh, before the client? So um, Vicki's asking, do you suggest that agents sign before the clients or do you suggest the client sign before the agents? Uh, they could sign it. They could sign all that in one session, which is fine. I would say for me, what's a common practice I, I think I've, I like is that the clients will sign it first and then you will finalize the, trans, the document at the end. If there's anything amiss, you can cancel it and then start the process again. So that's what I would think it'd be more comfortable in how I would perceive it. Um, Anthony, your opinion of it? Uh, personal preference. Um, I always ask agents, you know, who's more difficult to get documents signed, uh, you or them? <laughs> and if your answer is, well, it's more vital that I get my clients to sign, then by all means, get your client, you know, get your clients to sign first. That's what I would do. So, but it just, it really comes down to personal preference. Very true. Okay. Ah, let's see. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm going to change it back to Digital Ink 2.0 back in the profile and settings under me. So I'm just changing it back and then saving it. So from this point forward, it'll just be Digital Ink um, Transactions. So if I go into Transactions, I'm picking on the Signal Hill property again. And go to Documents. I, I mean, I could have done an e-sign right there, but I'll just go this way. Do a new session of e-signing residential listing agreement. We're going to only use one signer, though. And we'll call this Digital Ink with, with George. You know, I've been picking on George the whole time. Let's try Connie. There we go. Oh, not Connie. What her name was Charlene, I believe. I forget who I have now. Okay, click next. So we can pick on Charlene. So same thing. Everything's, as you see, like, wow, it's all the same thing so far. Yeah, it is all the same thing, except maybe this part of it is different, the cybersecurity protection. Now this is unique to Digital Inc, which is allows a two-factor authentication. So if you want one of this, it's $5 per signing session. So you can have a number of different electronic signatures going, in, going on in one session. It's just $5 for the whole thing in the session. Um, it adds an extra, extra peace of mind. Now who pays for it? That's worked out between either yourself or the client or third party. Um, but the way it works is just like if you have never heard of two-factor authentication, um, the person in this scenario, Charlene, would get a text message and she would get a special code. And then she would have to input that code before doing electronic signatures. So it verifies that she's the right person signing these documents because you don't want a scenario where she's out and about and then somebody at the house is trying to sign the documents on her behalf. You don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that the person who's signing those documents is the person's name is right on that computer screen, Charlene Connie Client. So in this practice session, we're going to not use that. So we're going to click Next. And then this may take a little bit. For some of you, be like, it's a slower internet. Now, it pulled up. Now, this is different than DocuSign's layout. DocuSign had it in the middle. Digital Inc. has it to the, to the left with tools on the right-hand side. If we had more than one signer, your signers would be right over here on the far right side. It does say signer. It's a little bit easier to see who the signers are. And I also like the fact that the tools are on the right-hand side on the same side as Charlene. So if you had different signers, everything from that from that point down would be would be related to that signer. So first step is make sure that you do your due diligence and going over the entire form. See the it's a little bit different. So this signature field makes it pretty obvious. Sign here, sign here. So that's one thing I like about. Digital Inc. It makes it very obvious where the signing set um, section is at. So that is not going to be the font that's going to be used because Charlene's going to be the one deciding what font to use. So that's important to know. But skipping all the way down. Oh, one thing is I do want to point out is okay. So these are initials here, but then there's another one. That's going to be a little bit different. I want to show you that's a little bit different. Um, I may have to wait until it goes in the signing session, but that's okay. Ah, there we are. See, let's see. So if you can see it, this is a required field for initials. This is optional. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a green box, a green check mark, and an X right there. So your client, it, this is more obvious to your client that this is optional. That's one thing I really like about it. And it's going to show up in the 
signing session for the client. Yes. So it's going to be an easy identifier that the arbitration and liquidated damages paragraphs are optional. So I want to wanted you to see that. So that way you, your eyes are going to be looking for that as you're scanning through the document. Um, going all the way down, rather than drag this all the way down, look what I'm going to do. Page. Oh, wait, I can go next page. All right, I can go to the last page. Oh, why didn't DocuSign have that? I don't know. They don't. That's one thing to speed up time. Saves a little bit of that carpal tunnel action going on. So closing that up by clicking it, you'll see that there is nothing here. So first thing is, I want a date right there. Um, I want a text field right there. I'm going to drag that text field and put it right there. And uh, let me clean it up a little bit. Maybe stretch it out a little bit more. OK. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit down here, drag and drop again, sign here. We'll be right there. Now I could do the date and drag it over there, but let me show you something. This is a sprocket, a gear, a gear icon right there. And I click it and I have all kinds of different choices. So if I click, let's say the date, well, the date's right there. I can drag it and put it right there. There's a spot for a seller's name. Rather than looking up here, ah, go back to my original signature, click the sprocket, add name block. There it is. And then I click it once, and then I drag it over there. There you go. There we go. Make it nice and pretty. OK, well, it's. Perfect, the way it is. And then I can close it up by clicking that. And you can keep practicing with all these. You can mark things up if you wanted to. But um, I would say uh, if you're trying to bring attention to something, that's fine. But this may darken the image of the document and make it harder to read at the very end. It might even black it out. So I would say delete it. But if you're trying to send a document over to someone to have special attention to this area, then you can do that. And you can go through all these, but let's fast forward a little bit. Click next. This is different than DocuSign. DocuSign has one way of sending out information and it's a formal one. Um, they're both formal, but this one, you can personalize it. So if you were to click this one, you can write down, please. Ah. Uh, documents to sign, see me first. Hello, Charmaine. Please do not sign these forms with, whoop, without speaking to me first. You So you can personalize it. Is it required? No. But I like to do so, so that would give some last minute instructions to my client to make sure that, oh, okay, at least the client knows that they received the documents and I'm giving them some last minute information. Sending the, inf send the invitations now. And you will see that personalized message to your client. So that way they understand like, okay, I'm not supposed to sign anything until um, I talk to my agent. So now we just wait. So Charlene waits patiently for the documents to be sent to her. And you, that give you time to go over some information with your client. Charlene, and she, in just a few moments, will receive that email. But while we're waiting, I think it's time for a question. Anybody with a question about anything related to this so far? And as you saw, that Digital Inc. and DocuSign behave very similarly. similarly. Similar, similarly, I can't say I can't say the right word without drinking my iced tea. It's called similar, similarly. I ah, see you caught it too. It's easier to type it than say it, apparently. Yes. So, um, but nevertheless, uh, if you have any questions, um, you can be able to ask away. I'm going to refresh the page. There it is. So, um, and as you could see that 
DocuSign, digital ink, very, very similar, a lot of things. Uh, one's free, the other one has a cost to it if you want to do unlimited signatures, just like digital ink. So, and um, they're not that greatly different from each other. It's just a matter of convenience. So here is the email that was sent to Charlene. And there is the message, the additional message. Hello, Charlene, please do not sign these forms without speaking to me first. There we go. So she got the message. So once again, I keep going and click signing, start signing. Now Charlene can start signing the document. Now this takes a little bit longer to load. So just be patient, just let your client know as well. It takes a little bit longer time to load. Now, once again, just like uh, DocuSign, the client can draw their own um, signature. Oh, this is just horrible. Yeah, just no, just no, just don't even try it, Leo, no. So no, so close. So, or they can choose a different font. If they don't like this font, that's okay. There are some other fonts to choose from. See, there's a limited number of fonts, but we notice that from experience, this is usually the larger one to read. You can read that one if you want to, but some of them are kind of small to read. But we'll choose that one. Now, this is also a good idea for you to print this out and keep it for your records, the consumer uh, yep. consent disclosure. Yes? Wait, wait, one second, Leo. Vicky, our... Question, how do we best access the docs to review with the client first? I would say uh, probably a Zoom meeting okay. or uh, when they open up the form, you are in your zip forms, but then they open up uh, their digital link or DocuSign and have them go through the form together so that you could do it. I would say it's gonna be easier using either Zoom or FaceTime, uh, share your screen so you can review the documents with them. The uh, point of fiduciary duty is to go over the, the documents at either time of signing or just around time of signing. Does that uh, help? Okay. Okay. Yep, you may proceed. I am proceeding. Now, once we've very, I mean, read all the information, she's read all the information, the EULA agreement, et cetera. She's okay with it. And click accept. So information, start, reject, exit. She can reject this whole process if she wants to. She, uh, right now we're going to start it. But also the nice thing, it shows that she can zoom in on something if she's having trouble reading it. My eyes are getting bad too. So yeah, um, I may have to zoom in, but we're practicing. Page one of 26, um, she can go all the way down to the last page, just like uh, we did when we set this up. Or we can go all the way to the first page. So this is when you would do your fiduciary duty and go over the line. You, you encourage her to scroll down because if she were to just click start, she just goes, just like DocuSign, it would go to the first spot that needs signature. And once she clicks it, it goes automatically to the next one. You're like, whoa, I went from page one, two, four. Skip, skip one, uh, skip two and three. So it's important that you go over this with your client. Now it becomes the world's worst video game ever. Required initials, required initials, required initials, on a broken record, required initials. Yes, it's a, it's a very boring thing so far. Very boring. We're getting to that spot where I want to show you. See, this is optional. So I could choose, I'm going to click it. Now it's very obvious to your client. Does the client want to accept it, decline or cancel? Think about it and discuss it with you first. So if they wanted to decline it, they can. So then click decline. This is the next one. See how very different they are? Check mark, X, initial. So if I were to click this, let's say they accept this one. So initials are there. But going back to the other spot, see, no initials right here in this area. Under 
liquidated damages. Okay. Okay, next mandatory spot. And after this is just smooth sailing. Not that I'm a sailor. Okay, this is the field, the text field that we put in. So I'm just gonna type, so I'm as a client, I was given instructions by my agent to type in Fountain Valley. You could have typed this in, you could have put in a field to do this, you could have, but um, you, it's, you can let your client do that as well in this scenario. The next field that has to be done would be this, because once you click this, it automatically populates the dates. Complete the signing, stay in review or reset. So you can, the client can start from the beginning, can hang out and just go over everything one more time or complete the signing. By the way, this progress bar was up there on the top the entire time and it showed you how many signature fields or things you, that the client had to touch were 26 in all. And it shows that they finished 26 out of 26. In our scenario right now, it show the client wants to finish, complete signing, and they're done. So now we click OK. So this, just like DocuSign, they're being offered a, a free account. Now this one's through Zip Logics, Lone Wolf, Zip Community. So the Zip Community account allows your client to be able to set up one. It's not a necessity, but if it's a client that you're going to be working with on a regular basis, like an investor, um, or someone that you're going to be able to share documents back and forth with, then I would say yes, have them set up a free um, a Zip Community account, but it's not required. So they're done. So I'm going to delete this email. And just a moment, we'll wait for the other email to come in. Oh, there it is. Signing complete. Now the client has access to the documents. They can download the signed copy here. They can download the signing certificate here. Um, they can print out the uh, documents if they wanted to. So it's entirely up to them. And as you see, all the documents, the pages are laid out with the signatures on them. Oops. So just get you one, for example, I'll click that one. There we go, Charlene's signature there and date. There we go. If you wanna see the last page, what it looks like, we can. There we go. Date, city, and last but not least, the date, client's name, signature. That's it. So they can choose to download it, they can choose to print it. It's entirely up to them. And that's it for their records. So of course they can choose to keep it printed for their records. You're gonna have it on file with digital, um, with uh, zip forms for up to seven years. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, you, you can keep it safekeeping there as well. So it'll be there in case you need to retrieve it for any reason. If we go back to our transactions, refreshing the transaction once again, go back into George Castle at Signal Hill, we will see under documents that we have a digital ink with Charlene. And I click it. Once again, it's the two forms with her signature and the signing certificate. The signing certificate is also very important, just like DocuSign because this is your proof that Charlene has signed the documents. Do not throw this away. This is just as important as those documents because this is your proof in case Charlene were to say years down the road, five years down the road said, I never signed it. I never agreed to this kind of stuff. Like, no, you did. I have the information here showing that you did sign for it. So, so once again, the signing certificate is there in case you need to retrieve it. And it's good for, it'll be stored there for five, um, seven years. So those are DocuSign and Digital Inc. Any questions about any of that so far? Because one is free and the other one you have to pay for. In case you're wondering like, where do I find that information? Where do I pay for it? Ah, it's okay. Just Google, I love, or whatever browser you want to use. I'm not going to be, you know, biased toward any of them. 
So far, no questions, Leo. But that was just pretty darn amazing. Yes, I am. I mean, you are too, Anthony. You're pretty darn amazing. Mm -hmm. I only say that I'm amazing because my birthday is not tomorrow, but the day after that. And it'll be an amazing day for everybody. Can you show one other, one other form? Sure. Because, yeah, we're getting sick and tired of the RPA and the listing agreement. Well, I know one scenario that agents are always faced with, especially if they're a listing agent, is that TDS or the SPQ, the seller property questionnaire or the transfer disclosure statement. And in the past, agents used to just email that form out to a client. But now, you know, what can they do when it comes to digitally signing that form? Or those two forms. Okay. So you want me to create a listing. Yep. Whereby, okay. you know, in the listing. Okay. Uh, you let's got go seller through. one. A one zero five four zero Talbert have an, oops. Yeah, there we go. Talbert happening. And uh, Fountain Valley. Mountain Valley, Orange, Orange, 92708. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right there. Parties, um, Seller 1. Let's go with the dress book. And it's going to be Alex Alexander. Okay, and if he was part of a trust, if that was the trust name, I put Alex Alexander down there, but we're just dealing with one person. And then add in the TDS. Yes. Going to documents, all forms. A lot of you were like, whoa, hold on. Well, did Leo have coffee today? No, I didn't. But if you practice a lot, this will, you'll probably go through this just as fast as, or even probably faster than me. So once I've added the TDS, and in case you're wondering, like, what is TDS that they're talking about? Well, the TDS is the Real Estate Transfer Disclosure Statement. Um, you'll go through it on your own, but you'll see that these gray areas, I can't touch them. My client, the seller, Alex Alexander, has to be the one to uh, update this information. He has to tell me on this form that he has sprinklers. He has a pool, he has water, he has gas, he has, et cetera, TV antenna, all these things that you're seeing here. Um, so he has to go through all this information. Um, oh, okay. I got to hurry. Um, so I'm going to send this document over to him for his electronic signature. So we're going to start with, uh, where to go, where to go, e-sign. And there we go, digital ink. Since I've already selected the form, select the parties, Alex Alexander, close it. Next. Now Alex Alexander can start filling this out. So all the blue areas that you see here are areas that are now available for seller one. And if you can scroll down just a little bit, Leo. All these areas here are for seller one to be able to fill in this form. So not only can they sign and initial the TDS and or SPQ, but they can also fill out the form electronically using either DocuSign or digital ink. So if he doesn't have a hot, if he doesn't have a pull, he can start deleting some of this stuff out. Well, he won't have to select it because these are all optional areas. Remember, this is in edit mode. So you're not deleting anything, Leo. Oh, you're right. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm not supposed to. Well, yeah, I'm not supposed to fill it out. He's supposed to do this. What am I doing? So disregard what I was just doing. Yeah, don't do that. So I'm going to send it over to him. Um, these are all looks like it's all pre-filled out for him to complete. There's nothing really much I have to do here to change. So I'm going to send it out to him. Click next. Once again, we're using digital ink. I would do a customized email typically, but we're just gonna make it fast. Send it out to him. And while we're waiting, 
here's that website for the NAR information about DocuSign. You can sign up for it. And once again, who would want to use DocuSign? DocuSign is used by many different industries. So it's really that they're comfortable using it. So they're just telling you, more than likely your broker is telling you to sign up for a DocuSign account. So you can do the same thing that the broker is com comfortable with and knows what to do and be able to guide you through the process. But as you saw in our demonstration, DocuSign and Digital Inc. for when it comes to zip forms, behaves very, very similar. There was that S word again, similar. Going back to our friend, Alex Alexander, he's selling. So I'm going to have Alex, this Alex receive the email. He's going to start signing. And then Alex, same thing as before, he's going to choose a font, but let's just say he's comfortable with that. He clicks upset, accept, he understands his rights. Um, inspection reports completed pursuant to the contract of sales. Okay, sure. Um, that's pretty much additional reports. No, that's it. Um, seller is occupying the property. The uh, range, yeah, well, yeah, it got all that fun stuff. Sure, you know, and they just make things faster. Public sewer system, sprinklers. Well, he has no pool, but he has a hot tub. No locking, so not locking that. Uh, gas supply. This is really important that you go over this with your client to make sure that they're clicking the right things. Because let's say they forget to put the water heater here. Oops. And they sign it and you get it and you're like, going, hmm, how do you get your, how do you get hot water? Well, I have a water heater. Well, you didn't say you have a water heater, nor did you tell me it was gas. So now you have to do a new signing session with them again. In our next class, we're going to show you how to use the share function. So you won't encounter that situation, make it a little bit easier. But, um, we're just going to go through it quickly. Going to initial. Uh, uh, no malfunctions. Okay. Uh, we're just going to skip ahead. These are all mandatory questions. Oh, goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Um, you know, I'm just going to say no to all this just to speed up things. Now, your client should not be doing this. I'm doing a no no, but. I'm just demonstrating. Sign, sign. Okay, fine. That's it. I don't. Okay. I was. That's kind of curious. Why is it asking for more than one? Huh. What's missing? Okay. We'll do n slash a. Okay. Yeah. I think we got a problem, Houston. Oh, no. Complete. Finally, 24 of 24. I was like, where's that extra 20? Where's that extra one sitting by itself? Complete. It's always, it it's always tricky to find those things. So complete, we're signing, we're not gonna have to review, we're good, we don't have to reset it, please don't reset it. Okay, and then we are done. And then our dear friend, Alex Alexander is being offered a zip community account. He says, no thanks. And then I'm gonna delete this email because in just a moment, Alex Alexander is going to get an email stating that um, his documents are complete. So it'll be just a moment. Anyway, so that is, he will get a finalized copy just like Charlene and George have received a finalized copy. Um, there it is. Sometimes it takes longer, but there it is. And he would have access to click the link to download the certificate if he wants to as well, but this is the signed contracts. And you'll see that uh, this is the form that he completed. These are the things that he said, he has no carbon monoxide device, bad. And other things there, but uh, he said these are the things that he says he has there, and you're and you make sure it's correct. So, 
Uh, but in this, of course, you're not going to tell him or her uh, what to complete. It's up to the individual, this client to fill it out correctly. You could just discuss with them and just like, do you have security bars? Like, no, they're not security bars. It's just paint. Oh, okay. So you did that right. Okay, good. And et cetera. So you have a garage? No, we don't have a garage. It's just dirt. Oh, okay. So that is how you complete that. The SPQ, when you're representing a seller. Any questions for me? Uh, let's see. That's in the case a seller has other inspections. Yes, the answer to that is if they have other inspections uh, that they have done or have other documentations. That is correct, Vicki. Okay. Well, I think that's it for this exciting session of electronic signatures, showing you the differences and similarities between DocuSign and Digital Ink. One is free. One is not. So, and you decide which one you want to use. Do you want to use the free or do you want to pay for it? There are some pros and cons using each one. But when it comes right down to it, it's just preference. That's all. Does anybody have any questions over anything that Leah went over today? You know that moment. Of I think silence. they. I think they took it pretty easy on you. That or uh, they were. They're still a little sleepy from lunch. <laughs> no, Anthony. These are the best agents out there. They are ready to take out Orange County, taking on new listings left and right. We're selling lockboxes here left and right, and they're ready to find buyers for those new homes. So these are the individuals that are going to put electronic signatures on each and every one of those. So I thank you all for attending, and I see you. Some of you just popped up right now under chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, I see a chat. What if the seller missed something in the disclosure? Um, you're probably going to have to resend it back out, Monica. Uh, the areas on the disclosure are all, you know, short of the, the mandatory yes, no questions. Um, everything is optional. So if the seller missed something, guess what? You're probably either going to have to get them to fill in that section and initial that section that they forgot to fill in, or you're going to have to resend it uh, for them to refill out the entire form. So it's really important that they fill it out correctly um, just because you can't get in trouble for over disclosure. You can only get in trouble for not disclose or not disclosing properly. Yeah. And the example that we used was the gas heater, um, the water heater, I should say that um, Alex did not list that he had a water heater initially. Like, oh, no, no, you had a water heater. That's where you get your hot water with gas. Yep. For sure. Are there any other questions? Uh, in the tools, is there a place to strike anything in a standard form? Uh, no, unfortunately. Real estate agents are not allowed to strike out or cross out any of the of the paragraph documents because um, you're not allowed to, unless you're a um, lawyer uh, and a um, and you've passed the bar exam at in California, you're not allowed to take out any of the verbiage in a contract. So that that verbiage is there for a reason. So yeah, they've not allowed you to strike anything out of a contract. Some things may be N.A., then put in the term N.A. in those fields. If you were here in our first class, there is a uh, button in zip forms called N.A. Um, NA fill. So any terms that would not necessarily be applicable, you could fill in the term N.A. throughout the entire form very quickly and easily. And I'm pulling up the residential purchase agreement, and you see there's N.A. fill right there. Yep. And you just click it and it applies it to all the empty spots. Oops, I think I just saw one. Yep, there's your beginning of the NAs. There's a lot more NAs further down. There we go. Okay, any other questions for anyone? from anyone? We have another class starting at 3.30. So that'll give us a 
a little bit of a break and it's gonna be going over some more tips about how to use zip forms. Um, so you can be able to stretch out a little bit and be ready for another exciting class on using zip forms. Um, so we'll just show you a few more things. So we'll just, and then we'll answer questions as you as it comes along. Well, this was a great class, Leo. Thank you very much, Monica, for the kind words. Well, thank you all very much. And I hope you all um, have a great and wonderful day. Hopefully we will see you this afternoon for our um, uh, ZipForms Advanced Tools and Tips. And uh, we will talk to you all in a little bit. And real quickly, Leo, if they do have any questions, how do they contact you? Other than calling Anthony, I know that's so mean. Don't pick on Anthony. There we are. So let me go from the current slide. So you can reach out to me via phone or email. My email address is leo at ocrealtors.org. Or you can reach me on via phone, 714-375-9313. And my extension number is 239. If you were to call the Laguna Hills number of 949-586-6800, just put in extension 239, you'll still get a hold of me. I'm really good at answering voicemails if I'm not available. So if I'm talking to someone else, like perhaps someone here at the office or someone over the phone, then yeah, do leave me a voicemail or send me an email. I'll respond to you as soon as I possibly can. And with that said, thank you all very much. And we will talk to you all in just a little bit. All right. Have a great day. Have a great day, Leo. Thank you.